here is Kung Fu Fighting because it doesn't work in the UFC. And that's what we're here to talk about on the Fighter and the Kid. <laughs> that's how I drag out Kid, everybody. That's right, because it's the Fighter and the Kid. And the Fighter's got a tiny head, but really broad shoulders and tiny, tiny calves. <laughs> big calves, a normal size head because I got a very big brain. Brennan draws me until I take my pants off. What is up? Hey, Brown! I am fired here. up. I had a giant cappuccino from Earth Cafe. Congratulations. I know. I'm jacked up on caffeine. It feels good. I'm about right? to jump at you like a spider monkey. Hey, man. You're crazy. crazy. Uh, I'm going to ask our wonderful engineer, um, TJ, will you bring up UFC 167 on this? Uh, what is this? You don't have to look at that. Welcome no, to 2013. No, no, I use my hands. I'm a man who uses his hands. I live <laughs> off the land, off the grid when I'm at home. I like to uh, churn my own butter and bale my own hay. I take, I take my women from behind. <laughs> no, I'm not mad at that. Only from behind. You don't want to look you in the eye. I don't like. I just don't like intimacy. I'm not comfortable with it. Too much. Too much. Too much. It's yeah. caveman stuff. How about the, How about we're in our new studio for firing the kid in the Fox offices right now? Dude, it's kind Let's of snap a picture of this. Blast it out. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We have a jacuzzi in the corner. Jacuzzi in the corner. And we got chocolate fountain. We got chocolate, chocolate fountain. fountain. Yep. We got. God, we got a whole crowd of girls watching. Easy, pipe down, ladies. Hey, ladies, ladies, calm down. Pipe down, calm down. one at a time. Brian, Brian, you're so much taller in person. You're so, what? You're so charismatic. Like you're even more charismatic in person. Calm down, ladies, ladies. I'll get nods. Brian, why are you called the kid? You're 46 years old. Because of this. It's true. Oh my God, that thing is no joke. Did your mom <laughs> read with a mule? <laughs> <laughs> Easy, big fella. Get you easy, fella. Easy, fella. Let me put this bad boy down. Easy, fella. Um, so you know what's I, up, man? We haven't seen each other a little bit. You were in San Diego with Steve-O. Yeah, yeah I was at, uh, we had a boat. We sold you out. Killed it. Four shows. Every night you're killing it. Yeah, the people of San Diego, thank you so much. I'll be. In, I wanted to come down there. Uh, I wish you had. I'm going to be in Sacramento this weekend. I just hosted, down. I just hosted TMZ. How'd morning. that go? It was great, and I and I shamelessly plugged my Sacramento date. Uh, I, literally, it's really fun. We'll watch it. It's me going. You guys aren't. Are you guys? Is anybody going to be in Sacramento Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Just on TV. I'm looking right at the camera. Because like, like, yeah. I'll be at the Punchline. Booyah. This Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Tight move. Only come out if you want to laugh. Who? Uh, yeah. While you were in San Diego, I was in North Carolina for the UFC 20th anniversary, doing some appearances. Really? Had to give the University of uh, North Carolina State football team a little chat. Well, oh, you did. I heard about that. I did. That. I did. Tell me about it. You, I, for me, it's weird. You know, I, I, I grew up playing football, and I played Division One football, so being back in that atmosphere was super cool for me. I was yeah. nervous, man. Why? Usually I don't get that Why nervous. Why are you nervous? Because I know how they feel. You know, like, I know exactly. It's their big rival game. They're playing New York City, North Carolina, UNC, yeah. Tar Heels. So it was an in-state rival game, and I knew, like, at University of Colorado, they would always bring in old guys to talk to us, and we could never relate to them. Yeah. And so this coach is cool. He brought in a young guy. Well, you know not only like a young guy, but an active athlete. Exactly. He's still in the, the arena. And basically, the story I told them is, you know, in high school, I got hurt, and all my scholarship kind of went away, and, um, you know, just hard work. And then I finally get to the University of Colorado. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the short version that I gave them. I finally get to the University of Colorado. Work my tail off. I, I was a walk on the University of Colorado. Work my tail off to make the team. And finally, it's a big deal in my family, finally I made the team. I made the, the travel roster. Um, and I remember opening up my locker and I, I was almost in tears because I was so excited to see my jersey, right? And I opened up my locker and my name spelled around in my jersey. <laughs> oh, no. So I told them. Cause, cause, so, so, oh, God. Yeah, so. So I was telling them. I told you I had 350 t-shirts made and they spelled my name Yeah. Wrong. So, so basically what I was telling them is every day I wake up with this relentless pursuit, like my, every day I open up my, my jersey spelled wrong. Yeah. I said, they know my name now, but still, every, you know, in the UFC world, you know, a lot of people know my name. So now I, I, I train like every day my name's spelled wrong. But don't you think? So it was, it's kind of that and just kind of like, you, I, ex, like I was saying how I expect to win. I expect to be the main event. I expect for our podcast to be number one on Fox. I expect for this to turn into a TV show. Yeah. And so when it happens, it's not a surprise to me. It's right. never surprised me. Right. Like uh, like on ESPN. When I asked you if you knocked out when you knocked out Pro Cop and you said uh, you weren't surprised, you expected it to happen sooner. I expect it to happen that, sooner. That's a, wouldn't you say that's a championship mindset? It is. And, but the thing is, a lot of misconception out there is they take that for being cocky. 
It's not cocky. No. I know my training and I know my preparation. Well, you work so hard to yes, exactly. you're not cocky. No, it's not cocky. I'm, you, you know me better than yeah. almost anyone. Yeah. I'm very humble. Yeah. I'm just, I work so hard, I expect these things to happen. Yeah. Like Jay Crawford on ESPN, we're sitting there and I get done. He goes, man, that was amazing, brother. He's like, you, you're definitely the best fighter we've had up here. And he goes, you didn't even seem nervous. I said, I expect to do well, man. I expect to probably take your job in four years. I expect this. And he but starts let me, laughing. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this about that. I know you're not caught. I, I see how hard you work. No, yeah. You work way harder. I've talked to other fighters who say that nobody works harder than them. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. So, so, so having said that, and, and how do you think, how, for people who are listening, how do you get a championship mindset? I know like part of the answer is you got to either have it or not, but what, what, do you think you get it? by first imagining what it is you want and being very honest with what you want. Do you see what you want? Do you visualize it? What, what do you think it is? Yeah, I, I think you visualize it. And you have to have this relentless pursuit of excellence. And it, it has to come from, no, one, no one's told me to do it. Don't get me wrong, my dad you know, uh, instilled discipline and a work ethic in me for sure. Yeah, you have a strong work ethic. Crazy work ethic. Yeah. And that all comes from my dad and you know him showing me the ropes and stuff like that. But it's just... Yeah, yeah. For me, I'm motivated by fear. I wake up every I morning. I wake up every morning, literally, like my name's gonna be spelled wrong. Like to me, I'm I'm, I'm always afraid. Like when people are talking about the UFC or something like that, like I'm 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 just I just assume I'm not gonna be included in that conversation. So I feel like I have to prove myself every single day. It's exhausting. I, it's I, exhausting. I couldn't agree more, man. I'm always, I think what has always driven me was a sense of fear. Just just the just for, on many different levels. Exactly. And and fear of going broke. Yeah. My biggest fear. Yeah. On, bro. You see, I see athletes, UFC guys, and you know they were these mega stars, bigger stars than I was. Yeah. And I see them now, and they tell me what they're doing, and I literally, it, I, it makes me sick to my stomach. I'm yeah. not gonna mention names. I saw guys before, way bigger star than me. I go to lunch, dinner with them. We get done, dude. I go straight to the gym. We get yeah. done with dinner. We're talking 11 midnight. I go straight to the gym. Yeah, yeah. Just so I'm like, oh my god. I do not want that to be me. It's very powerful, isn't it? That that kind of fear. I was always terrified of failure. I just always was so afraid that I was going to be forty something and not have ever had a professional job. You don't want to be just the guy. No one wants to be just the guy. You don't want to be just the guy in the UFC. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Just the guy. In the, you know how hard these guys work. But see, a lot of people deal with fear and uh, fear of accomplishment. Fear beats a lot of people. Weed all day or whatever it is. Yeah, they, or the, they'll, they'll do drugs. Action. They'll do drugs yeah. or they do alcohol because it. It's almost this, the, the pressure. There's a lot of pressure. There's only pressure if you're unprepared. Don't get me wrong. My last five felt a ton of pressure. Yeah. Main card. Well, you, you and Shane Carlin, before the first time I met you, you were both talking to these huge, giant, badass dudes. You know, you and Shane talking about these two professional fighters. I remember just looking at these two huge super athletes who could beat up most of the planet, and you guys were both talking about how basically afraid you are before you fight, in a way. It's like, terrifying. you'd rather be anywhere else. Terrifying. Yeah. It's just, it, it, you're just, you're terrifying, you know, for, for a number of See, reasons. See, a lot of guys wouldn't admit there. that, but, what, but that, that terror moves you in the right direction. And I've always said that to people who are younger. I say, it's fine to be afraid. I've talked to Navy SEALs who say, I'm very, I'm very afraid, but guess what? I, 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 you I'm come. trained. But yeah, you're trained. trained. You're prepared. And the reason I train is so I can operate within the fear. It's, it, yeah, it's all, yeah. So you're going to have all these butterflies. The very best in the world, they get these butterflies that fly in one direction. There it is. Every, and there it is. There Everyone it is. else, these butterflies are over the place. They're having negative thoughts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Bam. If you can get them to go one direction, you're going to be successful. Well, it's what I was talking to Cody. Because everyone has them. Yeah, I was, everyone I, has those. I was talking to Cody. Uh, and the guys who are on and off, like you see them win fight, lose a fight, lose two, win one, lose two, win one. Yeah. They're not getting the butterflies in the right direction most That's of the right. time. Because you got to know how to talk to yourself. That's why when I was talking to Cody, remember Cody was saying, we, we were texting about it. I was like, you're yeah, Cody sent me. Cody sent me a, a text. He goes, Brian's a genius. It's like he's a. <laughs> I'm just a, a older. Coach. And I go, what? Yeah, no, I'm just older, and I and I know what performance anxiety is about. I lived it, and th that's a big difference. I don't have to be a fighter to know what performance. For sure. Is about. No, you put yourself out there I, every I, weekend. I live every weekend. It just as an actor and all that. So the, the, I know the, the, the nerves I get before I'm on ESPN or before I'm on Chelsea mm -hmm. lately are very similar to nerves for a fight. Of course, about perform you're putting yourself out there. That's right. And you've got to know how to talk to yourself. And that's why I said, Cody, you stop telling fine. yourself stories. Yeah. I don't want to hear you telling yourself stories. I don't want to hear you saying anything about, well, I wonder if I'm ready to do extra. You just fight the dude in front of you, man. You're ready. You've gotten to a point where you can, you react to what's, you you know how to react. You react. You have to. Right. And, and, and basically, it comes from visualization, what's going on. You picture the fight, what, what, how you want to go. Because your brain doesn't know the difference. 
Right. It, it doesn't know the difference. So when you're picturing yourself going through the motions, winning the fight, stuff, putting yourself in a bad position, getting out of it, getting the submission, getting the knockout, the more you visualize that, the better. Because your brain, you, you get, get better, better brain. You get better by visualizing. Oh it's my rehearsal. gosh, Navy SEALs, the rehearsal that they go through yeah. their brain is crazy. Yeah. So when you get there, you've already been there a thousand times. It's nothing new. You don't want to get in there and everything's new. Right. You do not want no, that. No, because you will sink to the level of your training. And, but at, the, at the, the same time, at the same time, you also don't want to overthink what you're doing. You do this every single day. Every single day, you do this. Now, there's just a ton of people watching, and if you lose, you need half your pay. Not a big deal, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's right. just a little different, that's right. it. That's a very good point, man, and I'm glad you brought, brought all that stuff up. Um, because I think that there, there is it's something a lot of people don't talk about. And they should, because there is something called a championship mindset. and and. So much of being a pro athlete and staying at the top, so much of it. They always say, well, it's mental. Well, what does that mean exactly? You know, And what it means is you have to learn how to, how to talk to yourself. You have to learn how to not listen to yourself a lot of times. And you got to learn how to shut down you know, the stories you 100%, tell yourself. Because it's just these stories that you're creating in your mind. Yeah, man. Like, like you look at football. You look at professional football. Do you think Tom Brady is more athletic than RG3? Right. Not a chance. No. Do you, does he have a stronger arm than RG3? No. Is he faster? Nope. Is he is he more built, more lean muscle, anything? No, no not at all. Tom Brady has the mindset of a champion. Yep. That's why he gets it done. He has the confidence. He believes in his arm. He knows his offense. And he's going to I guarantee he's you, gonna mentally, win. he's ready to go. Yep. You know what the difference is? Tom Brady wants that last drive to win the game. Mm -hmm. Other people fear it. Tom Brady asks for that. That's the difference. That's I want to be in the fifth round with King Velasquez. That's, exact, that's all I live for. Yep. I want to be in that fifth round. Well, you said He's that. one two, I one two. The fifth round, it's all right on it for the world championship. You said that. That's all I think about. You said you're in this. You're in this for one reason, and that's the belt. I and quit I, I, the, the day when the day when they're like, if Dana White came up to me right now, I was like, Sean, listen, you can win four or five fights in a row. It doesn't matter. You're never getting a title shot. I quit. Yeah. It's just not worth it to me. Yep. Unless you're going to be the best. Unless you're going to be number one. There's no reason doing this. I, I just think that that you know. Reaching for that, reaching for excellence, and you use the word excellence is exactly right. Reaching for excellence is the whole deal. There's nothing more satisfying. There's nothing. There's and nothing. You, it's and way better than anything. You and I love hanging more than anybody. For sure. Like you and I love to hang. You drink and I love Abby Kenny. What? We'll, we'll what? just hang, drink wine, and talk all night. Oh and be silly geese. But that does not still replace. We're that's only really as good. Yeah, that's only as good as, as, good as, as your, the, the work you've got. For done. sure. That's for your sure. reward. That, that's our reward. Yeah. That's my reward. Chip yeah. behind some downtime. And, and I always try to help people with that. Like I, I see a lot of people, that, you know, who just uh, can't find their way, and it's very hard because they're stuck in a job that they're, they, you know. And this is what I say to people: If you're stuck in a job that you 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 find very difficult and you don't feel like you have passion, get a hobby. Pick up jujitsu. Yeah, that you, you cannot something. wait to get off work and pursue. And go get good at that. Something. It'll change you your whole something. life. I agree. It'll change your whole life. Did I mention I was going to be in Sacramento this weekend? All right. Um, we are very lucky because we have uh, Liz, Liz Carmouche uh, calling in, in a little bit. Fight for the troops. She's I'm a stud. I'm very excited. She won her last fight. Most people know her from her fight with Ronda Rousey. Yeah. And almost, almost. Main event, UFC 157. Yeah. I've never heard a bad thing about her, man. She's she's just a uh, class act, garbage, and I, I'm looking forward. I want to talk the to thing, Liz about the thing. The thing stuff. that's so amazing is she was she's on fight for the troops. She was in. The, I, I want to say she was in the Marines. She was a Marine before. Yeah. She's gay. She's a le she's a lesbian, mm -hmm. and she's a woman fighter in the UFC. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Name another sport that you can go and say this about. Yeah. Not there's nothing in the world. Yeah. I mean, and the UFC embraces it. It's great. That's all you hear. It's, it's dope. Modern. It's dope. Yeah. Oh, and she's she, you know she's fighting in front of the troops. It's crazy to me, man. That's pretty wild. Where the, where is this fight? This fight is in Nashville, I think. Fort Campbell, Kentucky. It's in Fort Campbell, Fort Kentucky. Campbell, Thank Kentucky. you for the guess. Thank yeah, you for right? Nashville. Right, yes. Nashville. I performed in Nashville, and I got off stage. I was like, that was really weird. There. Everyone tells me Nashville's amazing. It's great. I heard best girls in America too. No. That's what I heard. No, no, no. no. Wait, how much time have you spent? Miami, Miami bro. Uh, that's, you, that's, be, you, you better learn Spanish to go down to Miami. I travel. How, I travel how about I take a warm deal. hand to your face? How about I take a warm hand to your... I think LA is better than Miami. How about I block that hand and take and dip my shoulder and then bang, and bang you in your in your ribs? Are you forgetting about the Love Line incident? When? I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in Cashmere, so I wasn't going to complete the fight. That's true. That was a nice yeah. sweater. 
We're going to mix it up, brother. We'll mix it up. My coach, Karen Gallagher, is in town. I'm going to start training with him again. And Perfect. We're going to mix it up. We're going to mix it you up. You know that, right? We're, we're going to mix it up. What, what was this boxer you're asking me about? Well, there's a, the heavyweight, Dion, DeAndre, um, uh, oh gosh, I wish that. He's 27 0, 27 he's 27, knockouts. He's actually, he's six foot seven. Uh, he is a Nubian god. He's a Nubian god. Say Nubian woman. He's a Nubian god. Nubian. He's the best looking human being I've ever seen. And, Easy. And please, and I'm begging you as my friend who I love. You're my friend. I'm yeah. begging you. Yeah. I'm begging you. Yeah. If you walk by him on the street, please look down. <laughs> please cast your eyes down. Please. You want no part of him. He's 6'7". He will put six, him. 6'7". What is he? 6'7", 240? He's about, he's actually about 220. He's actually a light. 220. He's, he's stupid shredded. Please. Let me, let me tell you. Buy him a drink. Buy him a drink. If, if he gets smart with you, if he gets a little lippy with you, please, please. Let me chuckle and look away. Let me, let me tell you how this would go down. Okay. Let, let's just say we're off Montana, right? We're off Montana in Santa Monica. Yeah. I see you and this giant this Nubian boxer walking down the street. And you guys talk trash to me. First of all, I'm gonna slap he's you. A heavyweight, he's heavyweight. He's the best American heavyweight. I'm gonna, I'm going. gonna slap you with an open hand. I'm gonna slap you right hey. here just to disrespect you. I'm hey, gonna man. slap you, push you down, and then your boy, who's the best heavyweight boxer in the world, U.S. Not better than the Klitschko, but that's a different story. How would you do against? How would you do against Vitali? Vitali, you know, you know oh, kickboxing. Oh, kickboxing. Oh, yeah. He's gonna oh, yeah. His wrestling jiu jitsu is really good. The fight would last about 30 seconds. Excuse me, sir. About 30 seconds. Sir, I'd take him down. I'd be sipping a cappuccino about 45 seconds later. I'm gonna... While he sleeps on the sidewalk. Hold on. And, it, and the paparazzi's taking pictures. You've got no answer for that jab. You don't I don't. I don't. No. I would not stand up with him. No. No, no why would I? No. Why would I? But what I'm like a shark in the water. When you go He's like a big zebra. This big, pale, ripped zebra. But when you go for that double leg, when you go for that double leg, he did! He did! And then that's, I just blast no, him with the right no, hand. Bajosa, no, Bajosa. That's that's thank you in Russian. Bajosa, hey, no, no, thank you. Let me paint the picture for you. I I'm walking like down. Bang, 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 I'm bang, walking bang. down. Yeah. Vlad, Vladimir Klitschko's coming down. His his fiance, uh, Hayden Panettiere, is on his left. You're on the right, but you're holding she's, all his luggage. She's a cutie, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, you're holding all their all their luggage, and you're holding their coffee, right? I slap you. The coffee falls. You get embarrassed. I point to Hayden. All I have to do is point and look. She backs off. Oh, and really? it's me and him, one on one. I take him down. It lasts 40 seconds. 40 seconds? And then you and her are carrying my shit. What? You and her are carrying hey, my that's stuff. Outrageous. And then we're and not sipping cappuccinos. Sir. And TMZ has all this on all, me. All this? Yeah. That's, well, you know what, dude? You've not seen my back kick. You've not seen my wheel kick. And you definitely haven't seen my roundhouse. And I was a black belt in Taekwondo. I won the American Taekwondo Championships in 1987. No, you didn't. Like no, you didn't. I'm going to have someone look this Iowa, up. In Iowa. And it was full contact. There, I said it. But we didn't punch the face. <laughs> That's why I never talk about it. Uh, best American heavyweight. I'm going to find his name. And then you're going to have to understand. Yeah, there we go. Let's get him. Let's get him. Let's get him up. Because you. There he is. Oh, Deontay Wilder. Do me a favor, America. Look up D A D E O N T A Y Wilder. Yeah, you want you want no part. You simply want no part. He's small. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. Oh, so, so he's a, go that. Oh, right. you think? Yeah, okay. yeah, he's yeah. six that's seven. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's that's sure. Jacked. That's a good looking. That's dude. a good looking dude. Yeah. He could win Mr. Olympia yeah, right, right now. Yes, he could. He's got thirty knockouts. He's the best. He doesn't want to take his tights off. Let's see who wins there. He's got no one ever. I don't want to play that game. No, either. no, no. He's got no. He dwarfs it. Now listen, Jesus. No, no. He's he's a beautiful human Whoa. being. Woo! Yeah, he's no joke. These are impressive pictures. Yeah. However, oh. Can, hey, can you keep scrolling? Are there any pictures of him uh, wrestling or doing jiu-jitsu on the ground? Well, dude, no, put the damn iPad. Down. Down. It put it down. down to it. it would if I catch him off Montana in Santa Monica. Well, well, but you see what he does? He's got those long arms. He just giant arms. Yeah, he pops you a couple of times. You don't want a piece of his jab because what happens is your nose gets all busted up, and then you know what you're doing. You're clutching the air. You're going, Brian, Brian, help me kick, kick him. Are you gonna oh, jump on his back? I control his hips. I just grab his hips. Now yeah. he can't move his hips. It's too easy. Now right? it's all arms. It's too easy. We're a couple of hyenas. That's right. Too uh, but you know what? He's such a good looking guy. I don't want you to hurt him, but he can take a punch. I mean, come on. I mean, go to do it. That's, that's a good looking fella. We're, but we're gawking He's right jacked. Now. Yeah, he's why'd jacked. you bring this guy up? He's, this guy's, he's the Brad Pitt of heavyweight It makes you feel yes. bad about yourself. Uh, maybe you. I feel De- Deontay, Deontay Wilder is his name. Look him up, everybody. 
He's uh, jacked. Get off his nuts. Should we get out to Anyways, see, uh, uh, Can we please talk about... Seven? Yes, please. Which, I'm going to go through it. I have to make the picks now yeah, first? Yeah, you do. Right, this is a change-up. You usually I have, have to hold your hand and talk you through the picks. Well, no, 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 my friend. I know exactly. I, I'm going to make... My, my picks are going to be dead-on accurate. All right, I'll give you my picks first. And Should, we go go the picks? Should we go with the big boys first? No, start, uh, let's let's go uh, from the very first line in the main card to the and then we'll end on the, the main well, event. Well, we got we got Mr. Rashad Evans and Chael Sung. Spent some time with both of those guys. You have, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, boy. Rashad was my coach on Tough. I knew him, but he's the reason really I made the Ultimate Fighter. He yeah. get, put a call in for me. Yeah. Um, have you wrestled with Rashad? Oh, yeah, a ton. Is he a beast? You're R- bigger. Well, I'm bigger. Rashad's very explosive, man. Yeah. Rashad's explosive. And I trained with Rashad before my Noguera fight in Florida at the Black Zillions. He was also a teammate of Mitch Jones. Anyways, that didn't work out. Anyways, um, listen, tough tough fight for Chael. I love Chael, man. Chael's my boy. He trains at Rain now. Chael, um, it's tough because I think, I think Rashad has a, a huge advantage on speed, huge advantage on speed yeah. and, and striking. You know, does he though? Because dude, he Chael's a good boxer. I mean, kind of. I think he gets it done. He, you know, he the way he outstruck Anderson Silva for a little bit there. I, I How know. did that happen? Was Anderson tired? No, I just think Anderson was so worried about wrestling, he just didn't respect mm-hmm. Chael's striking. And so, it, it, you know, anyone with a good jab can do some damage. Yeah. A guy does not care if they get hit. Yeah. Uh, I think Rashad has the advantage in striking and speed. I think Chael has the advantage um, in size and strength. He's taller. He's taller, he's thicker, he's stronger. and stronger. Really? Yeah. And Rashad. Yeah. But I think Rashad's uh, um, quicker and, and striking is going to be the difference. What? Tough fight for Chip. Tough fight for Chip. Tough so fight you're fight going with Rashad Evans? I mean, Can I pull Chill. Switzerland? Listen, brother. Chael will surprise you, and he finds a way to win. I know. The only reason oh, I, I know. choose Chael on this fight. You're taking Chael? Now, now I'm going to take Rashad. I always you're feel Chael. like Rashad, I, as great as he is, and he is. I always feel like sometimes Rashad, like Rashad, off nights. he just doesn't want to fight sometimes. Yeah, I, always feel like I agree. Like, sometimes he's, he's just head. off night. Yeah, Rashad just doesn't. He's just like, yeah, let's get in here. Yeah, he's not as hungry. He's so calm. I agree. And, and that could be a good thing. He beat, his last fight, he beat Dan Hester, and then before that, he fell on and did not look very good. Right. And, and. So you're taking, Ch- how's Chael going to win? Well, I think Chael, and see, I, don't be surprised if Chael, see, Chael will surprise you with the wrestling. Chael surprised. He's not surprising anyone with wrestling. Right. He's a world class wrestler. That's right. He's not surprising anyone with and, that. And I, I, you know Phenomenal what? Olympic alternate wrestler. Yeah. Um, hard to see. He's a more decorated wrestler than yeah, Rashad. Than Rashad. So I, I think he's going to. Both of them are hard to submit. Both of them are very, very hard to submit. Very hard to submit. But uh, listen, man, he submitted. Uh, Rashad's you know, a black belt now. He, yeah, but he submitted. Uh, um, you know, Shogun. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with uh, submission. I'm gonna go Chael by submission. I'm gonna say That's Rashad good. TKO second round. Really? Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Next, next. Let's go with. Uh, let's go. Let's ask uh, Mr. Rory McDonald and Robbie Lawler. Um, I, I, I like this fight. I like this fight. This fight's dope. Robbie Lawler's younger than I thought. Robbie, I think, is 30. He's he, 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 no, Robbie's 29. But the reason he thinks he's so old is because he's been seven. fighting forever. Yeah. He's like on UFC 13 poster. That's crazy. He's just been fighting forever, man. He, he was in Strike Force. So he, the thing is, in Strike Force, he was in fighting the best talent. He was getting paid crazy amount of money. Was he? Yes, crazy amount of paydays. I love and then he comes over from Strike Force. Money. But the thing is, in Strike Force, he was, he, he, he was up and down. Now he's in the UFC. And his career is a booming. He he beats Rory. He's probably gonna get a title shot. Um, Rory is a very very difficult man to beat. He's just he's like, so he's, talented. He's very he's talented. So tough. He's like George St. Pierre, a little younger. I can't bet against Rory McDonald in this fight. I just yeah, can't. I can't. Rory the is, only way Robbie wins. Package. The only way Robbie wins. He is. He, he's first of all at one seventy. He's the hardest hitter at one seventy. I know everyone say, oh, Johnny Hendricks. Nope, I'll take Robbie Lawler. Really? Dude, can punch, son. Huh? Oh, yeah. You know, so uh, his only chance to win, I think, is uh, Rory getting lazy or in a transition getting caught with a huge right hand or yeah, left hook. Yeah, Rory's a very good boxer. Rory's footwork is really good. Rory's good. footwork could be the difference and Rory's jab. So is takedown. So yes. So is running Yes, double. yes. So I'm going to say Roy McDonald wins decision. I can't Majority this, decision. I really can't I don't think Roy, I don't think Rory loses around. Majority decision. No, I don't know. You go. You're, you're agreeing with me. I'm agreeing with you. 
Congrats. Welcome to the yeah, thank, thank you. Congrats. We've got we've got we've got a very interesting fight. We Ooh, got what do we got? Interesting. What do we got? We got Mr. Woodley. <laughs> I wish you guys I, I, I wish you guys could see what Brendan's doing with this. I, huge I was ball, biting this giant foam finger. We'll take a picture of our studio. That yeah. Miley Cyrus was using this is the exact one Miley Cyrus was using. I look up and you're literally you're literally deep throating that finger. That's not right. And for out of nowhere, for no reason, no reason. I mentioned I wrote Woodley and you start deep throwing that finger, and I don't know what, what's going on with you. Uh, you got two very good wrestlers, two explosive wrestlers. Say Tyrone is much. Um, is it Ty? Is it Tyron? Oh, is it? It's not Tyron. It's Woodley. T Wood. We'll call him T Wood. T Wood. T T is shorter. I, I spent time with both these but guys. Is T Wood and Koscheck? Yes, T is quite a bit shorter than Josh Koscheck. Mm. Josh Koscheck is arguably arguably a more decorated wrestler. For sure. Yeah. Uh, he is. Ah, man. He is. He's, he's, a he's, 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 he's a better. He's pedigree. He's a beast. So I'm gonna have to tell. I'm gonna have you to. You give say, me your pick first on this one, then I'll go. I, I think. Know who I'm I, I, I think I have to go as tough as Woodley is. I, I, I have to go with Josh Koscheck. Yes, we disagree. I will take T Wood. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Since he lost to Markhart, he's on a freaking tear, my man. I think he's more athletic than Koscheck. Um, you're wrong about that. But he is more. He's very explosive. And, and very tough, but um, I'll take Woodley in a decision. In a decision. Another decision. In, in I don't see decision. either one finishing each other. I if it's if it's a wrestling match, I I think Koscheck dominates. Not dominates, but I think Koscheck edges him out. Mm. I think Koscheck is actually just um, longer, and that plays a factor. Ka- Koscheck in has has fought way tougher competition. That's for sure. Yeah, and he has the advantage in the UFC. Yes, he being in the UFC since. Day so one. I have to go. I have to go with Mr. Kosh. I got T one. Carry right. on. All right. Moving well, on. If I, can oh, back, if I can get this back to. Uh, uh, you know what frustrates me? How you yeah. don't know how to work an iPad. No, hey, I, I got an idea. Instead of your next tennis lesson, why don't you come over to my place and I'll give you an iPad lesson. I'm lessons Welcome to 2013. I want you to come watch me. I want you to sit courtside quietly with your hands in your lap, and I want you to watch how I what I do to a ball. No, no, no. Let me let me let me tell you. First of all, I'm gonna show up to your lesson tomorrow. I'm gonna have cut off jean shorts. My ass cheeks hanging out the back. I'm gonna have high top shoes on. Yep. I'm gonna bring a racket. Yep. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you and your instructor. That uh, you, that's gonna happen. You won't touch my surf. First you of all, your instructor's gonna be like, "Oh my god, Brian, you need to learn from him." No, no, no. You'll come in and, with and he's gonna say, "Where did you get those jean shorts from?" You come in with a game face, and I'm gonna change that face to a clown face. <laughs> all right. Let's keep going. Um, we've got uh, Elliot and Bagwatov, and I have no no opinion on. This is on the main card? Yeah. We're going to skip that. Let's jump to uh, Johnny Hendricks and George St. Pierre. Wow, you're just going to go past those guys like that, bro? I just don't know enough about them, and we want to get to the main subject, right? You want to get to the main. Yeah, we, we want to get to those guys like that. I mean, Johnny Hendricks, Big Rig, and George St. Pierre, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now, George is going to out-wrestle. George is going to put Johnny Hendricks on his back. George is going to do something Johnny Hendricks hasn't given. And bring in the GSP fan club, because here we are. Yeah. Brian's number one, I'm number well, two. I mean, I'm the co-president, you're the president well, who, of the fan club. He's, who's, look, okay, here's, here's the bottom line. I think he's had tougher challenges. Well, Johnny Hendricks, Johnny Hendricks hits very hard. Uh, uh, Nick Diaz's hands are way more accurate. And ah, he different. Put his hands, different. He couldn't put his hands. Couldn't put his hands on. Well, okay, well the, the reason Diaz can't put his hands on is because uh, there are a lot of reasons. Diaz's Diaz wrestling's so bad that he was just keeping getting taken down, so he could never get let his hands go. Johnny Hendricks' hips are very good. That's right. And and Johnny Hendricks is a very high level grappler. His jujitsu is very sure very is. underrated. Sure is. But all we see are these huge right hands. But this thing, the reason he lands these giant right hands, because everyone's scared of getting taken down. Yeah. George is too athletic and can keep the distance. Yeah. So that huge right hand, that fake to double to the right hand, which I love, yeah. isn't going to land on George St. Pierre. That's right. And uh, what I was going to say is that as tough as Johnny Hendricks is, I just don't believe there's anything that Johnny Hendricks has to offer I agree. that Mr. St. Pierre hasn't faced before and uh, bested. You're talking about a guy who beat Carlos Condit, etc. Everybody was he even in a fight. What are you doing? Josh When's the last Josh time he was in trouble? Josh When's the last time he was in trouble? Exactly. It's, an, it's not even a fight. People are like, oh, he's so boring. Here's, because he's dominated. Here's the fight I want to say. Here's so, no, no, hold on. Let me stop you there. Let's say in some weird alternate world, Johnny Hendricks, which I wouldn't be surprised. Like I said, I'm never surprised whatever happens to UFC. Let's say Johnny Hendricks lands his huge right hand, knocks George St. Pierre out. 
What's who, who, who's Johnny Hendricks fighting next? I'll tell you exactly who's fighting. Let's hear it. Who I'd love to see him fight. Roy McDonald? Nope. Hector Lombard. Hector Lombard. Um, um, Hector Lombard. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm speech. I'm gonna leave. Hector I'm Lombard. I'm gonna, I'm sick to my stomach. Hector Lombard. How dare you? He's just as hard, and he's oh a monster. God. And that would I feel sick. Fight. I feel sick. Hector You're Lombard. You're bringing in another ATT guy. I'm so sure. sick of this. I feel I'm sick sure. to my stomach. Hector Lombard. Yeah, I said it. Well, what about Roy McDonald after he beats Robbie Lawler? How about Johnny Hendricks, Robbie Lawler? Nah. Sure, I'd like to see that. Carlos Condit, but Johnny Hendricks. Here, here's why. Here's why. Here's why Johnny Hendricks. Roy McDonald isn't as exciting because Hector Lombard only had one fight at 170. You just gave him a title shot? Hector Lombard. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is a killer. Brian. Yeah. I'm the UFC. Yeah. Hector Lombard. Yeah. Welcome to the real world. Yeah. Hector Lombard. 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 Yeah. Hector I think the only reason I'm saying that is because Hector Lombard is a power hitter. Nate Dogg didn't look like himself. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. And that and everybody has an off night. There's no question. Um, you and I know Nate's one of the toughest people on the planet. He's been doing it forever. He's the yeah. best. We love him. So uh, that's an emotional thing that you know we all we all. But but what I'm saying is that I think Hector Lombard it would be a great fight. If you look at Bellator. If you look at no, 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 look at no, 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 don't ever mention Bellator in the brand new studio ever again. Ever. Bellator is like the CFL. Does any hey listeners, if you want to talk, if you want to hear us talk about the CFL, tweet us. I'll, I'll do you. I'll do you a solid. No one's gonna tweet us talk about the CFL or Bellator. Now I do not give two flying fricks. Two see that flying. fricks about Bellator. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, we're not. You swearing. can't talk about Bellator. You can't talk about Bellator. You cannot credit his wins from Bellator to the UFC. It's a different animal. Cause look, he came straight from dominating Bellator. Can the UFC? Really hasn't been that successful. Had to cut down to 170, and that was a horrible cut for him. He looked fun. great when he fought Nate, fun, right? but prior to Nate, he hasn't looked that good. Paul Harris, he knocked out Paul Harris, but he wasn't dominating. That's dudes, kind dudes of a like big deal him. too. He's got not. He's a he's a disaster when you have. He's to a disaster. You're talking about a different animal with the UFC and the rest of those other uh, freaking. Is it the Olympic judo guy? What what is what is John Hendricks going to do against Lump, Hector Lump? They're going to slug it out. Who hits hard? Don't Johnny, tell me Johnny, Johnny Hendricks. Hendricks. You're out of your mind. Oh, let's look at the track record. He doesn't hit harder than Johnny him. Hendricks Hector has been Lombard. fighting and knocking everyone out first on the field. First of all, don't flail your hands in my direction because it's going to get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring down. No, my I'm hands sweating. Start You're fresh. And my hands start flailing and one thing leads to another. Well, you want Love Line again? This is a new student. I didn't want to have to do I this. I don't remember what you're talking about. What do you mean Love Line? I'll post the video. All right. You guys already did. Anyways. Uh, get that stuff, get that noise out of here. Get that noise out. Get that bell. Okay, so out so if Johnny Hendricks wins, realistically, let's get realistic. Who do I want to see him fight? Yeah, I'd love to see that. That I'd like Robbie to see two power, two power hitters. I know I'd like to see Robbie Lawler. And, Me too. Uh, yeah. That'd be a great. Fight. Yeah. Hey, hey. How about how about George wins? Roy wins. They fight each other. Their best friends be a great drama countdown. Roy's gonna hate me for saying it. So is George. Those two fight. Robbie Lawler and uh, Johnny Hendricks fight. The two losers fight. Wow. Dope, right? Yeah. Joe Sibley, you're welcome. Is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? The, oh, that could happen. I can see. It's GSP. It's GSP. You want to know the honest truth? And I know both guys very well. I don't think GSP would fight Roy. For two reasons. One, he has too much money. Yeah. Two, he doesn't need to fight him. He's going to he's gonna beat Johnny Hendricks. There's no one else for him to fight. And then the only thing left for him is a super fight. Which I was going to ask you. We've it's been over this and people I hate when I say this. George St. Pierre versus Anderson Silva, and they do a catch weight, let's say, at 190. It might go down as the boringest fight in history. If you hated George St. Pierre before, and they have the super fight, you're really going to hate him. Because he's going to take Anderson Silva down for five rounds. There's going to be a couple submission attempts. Nothing's going to go down. He's going to win in a majority decision. Really? It's going to be very boring. He'll take him down. Over and over about- and over. Because Chael took him down over and over. George St. Pierre is a better MMA wrestler and striker than Chael Sonnen. He's better at striking the takedown. He's better at mixing it up. So he's just going to take him down. You don't up. think that Anderson Silva would knock him out? Nope, not a chance. George is too smart for it. He just won't stand this. He point. just, he just, he's either in or he's out. You know what I'm saying? But, but, he doesn't but, stay in that range. Know, Anderson, George is quicker than Anderson, Anderson Silva. Silva. Seems to be able to stop everybody's takedowns at the end of the day. You get one on him. Not Chael. Chael took him down over and over. Um, then the second fight, he took him down again, and that was it. That's true. Yeah. I, I just think George does it better than anyone. And he's too he quick. He's too quick for Anderson. It would not be a good fight. You want a super fight? The super, the fight of our century, our, our Muhammad Ali. Hold on. What's up? 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to guess what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Fight of the fight of our lifetime. The fight of our lifetime. Fight of our lifetime. Cold. Cold. God, I hope you bring the, the heat on this. If you don't, I'm gonna crush your mic. Cold. And it's gonna be just the fight. Well, hey everyone, the kid has died. I've killed him, and it's just the fighter. The kid's been fired. The kid's been fired. Um, does it include Anderson Silva? Yes. Does it include John Jones? Yes, sir. You got it. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah. The, 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 that would be John the, Jones versus Anderson Silva, and they both they can fight at 205. The problem, Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous fight. Yeah. You want you want to know who wins? John Jones. He takes him down and TKOs him. Well, John Jones. Jones is the best fighter in the UFC. He's basically. He's basically, it, I feel like he is so much to manage. Anderson Silva is the greatest ever, in my opinion. I think he's the greatest fighter I ever. I agree. He's the greatest fighter ever. Right and, now. and 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 I think he's a much, I think he's a much better striker than John Jones actually. I, I agree. And, I agree. And, I think he's a better pure striker. But I do think you're right that I, I think John's too, too big yeah, and too strong. He's just too big and I think he's, his grab goes too good, and he's going to toss him down. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's yeah, the difference. What know. a great fight! And that fight's going to be a finish. Whether if John, let's say John does get caught with a punch, some there's gonna be a finish. That's your fight of our lifetime. I gu- I guarantee you that fight happens. Really? Because John's it's just been happen. killing the 205 division. He he's gonna he fights Glover, Texas, and he's got he's got to get through Gustafson. No, you you already got through Gustafson. Gustafson has another matchup. Okay. And then which we don't know about. But they're gonna have a rematch, of course. They're gonna have a rematch, yeah. and John's gonna get through that. Because yeah. he, he's gonna train more, he, he's gonna be more prepared. He's gonna get through that. And then he, his next challenge is Glover Texera. That's a tough fight, but again, John beats him. So he's just going to clear the division, and then they're like, yo, what do you, like Anderson's, let's say Anderson beats Weidman, what's next? Sick. The fight of our lifetime. That, that Pacquiao, yeah, that Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather yeah. fight, all, everyone to see in boxing, that went away because Pacquiao got knocked out. Yeah. If I, if that's I, over. If that's I, over. If I, if this Anderson, is the fight of the century. If I'm Anderson Silva, I want George St. Pierre, I don't want John Jones. John Jones. If the thing, that's why you're not. That's why you wear cashmere sweaters, and you and I are talking on this mic. Because Anderson Silva wants to be challenged. Does Anderson know, Silva? Does he, oh yeah. Does, has he said he someone's wants to fight legacy? John Jones? I thought he said he didn't want to fight. No, he would. He would fight him. I heard him say he would. Fight it's a big different story when Dana White goes, "Listen, fight him, and here's this lump sum of, lump sum of money that's going to change your life forever." Which he's already bloated, right? Yeah. But there's a certain amount of money. No, that fight's so loaded. good. Everybody needs more money. You spend Everyone. money. You Everyone. Make it. You know, I, 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 I remember. I remember. Huge oh, for sure. I remember. I thought, if man, if I just make a hundred thousand dollars, I'll be set, man. I'll be bombed. Yeah. I did that year one in the Last UFC. Year, I've been in the now. UFC over almost five years. Year one, I did it, yeah. and I was like, uh, this isn't cool. Hello. Hey, Liz. It's Brian Callen from the Fighter and the Kid. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks for joining us, man. How are you feeling? Liz, we I'm love you. I can't hear you, but we love you here. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you got I mean, you got yeah. So you got a fight coming up. Uh, I guess when, when is weigh in tomorrow? It's on Wednesday against Alexis Davis. No, I know that, but how? When is weigh in? Weigh in tomorrow? Oh yeah, weigh in tomorrow. How, how is? Have you had to suck a lot of weight for this fight? Or? Nope, not at all. Not even slightly. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's really kind of exciting. Is you know, um, I, I mean, we, we don't have to talk so much about your fight, you know, because that's a whole a different subject. That's all but she's I, been doing. I, I kind yeah, that's all you've been doing. I kind of wanted to talk to you, and Brennan and I were talking. We kind of wanted to talk to you about, you know, you've come a long way. I mean, you came up, you know, you're you're, you're, you're a soldier. You you've broken ground in a lot of different ways, but you know, you're you're a female fighter, and you are an actual draw. And, and that's, that's you know, there are a handful. I can think of maybe three women right now, Misha Tate, yourself, she, and Ronda. She's, she's number two for sure. Yeah, most you're, you're number two. Or, you know, yeah. you would, I mean, and, and just as being a draw and some so, so a woman that men are going to tune in to watch fight is actually kind of groundbreaking. Uh, you know, it's not really been done. And, and, and this is probably the first year with Ronda and yourself and those fights where... Uh, men are really tuning in in large numbers, and and I wonder um, if you ever visualize that. Has this been as big a surprise to you as it has been to a lot of viewers? It, it has been. Um, I definitely thought that it was going to be a little bit more difficult to get the acceptance for men, and so far it's been nothing but supportive, and that was a huge surprise right. to me. I thought it'd be it'd take a little bit more time, a little more groundbreaking, and so far it's just been quick acceptance and, and awesome to see it. 
Yeah, it's been great, right? And what, you came up, tell us a little bit about, I mean, you came up pretty rough. You, you know, you, it wasn't like you were, you're, you're now making money as a fighter. But I heard, I, Liz, I heard you didn't even have furniture. We have the same manager. Lex, we have the same Lex, manager. Lex is a, both our manager. I love Lex. Right. Liz, please take a warm hand to his face when you see him if he's standing right there for me. But I, he told me she didn't really have furniture in her place. Living out of the gym. <laughs> yeah, you were life-changing. Ronda fight was life-changing. I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I didn't have furniture. I was, I was happy with a simple life. My whole philosophy is if I'm She's dirty, not, I'm not going to sit on my clean couch. <laughs> Did yeah, I make that all up? She was happy. She, no, no, Liz, she, bear with me here. I'm, so trying to, I'm, trying, I'm trying to sell this story. <laughs> I heard you're asleep on the floor, eating Lucky Charms every night, yeah. and your best friend was a rat. You yeah. got tell it. Them, tell That's them. exactly what yeah, it was. Yeah. She, she goes, yeah, you got it. <laughs> I knew it. There you go. Has your, Liz, has your, cha- has your training changed for your, for, for, uh, 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 in, uh, at all, or are you pretty much sticking to the same game plan? You know, I, the game plan I mean, always changes for each opponent, but as far as what I do in practice, that's always the same. That doesn't really change. Are your are your sparring partners primarily men, or are they is it a mix? It's always primarily men. It's very rare that we can actually bring in women as training partners. Right. It's still because the sport's still in its infancy. I mean, that's a good example of of how rare female fighters still are. You know, um, it seems. And, and by the way, one of the things I've noticed is a lot of like uh, um, um, Rhonda and, and Misha, you know, there's, this, there's a lot of pressure for them to be sort of dolled up and sort of exhibit a feminine side as well as a tough side. And I, I would imagine it's kind of difficult to play both sides of that fence in a sense. You, you don't have that kind of pressure, it seems. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you, know, you, I mean you're, you're, you, you go out there and you're utilitarian, you go out there and you fight. And... and well, Brennan has to say. I, I just feel like with the girls, <clears throat> the re- there hasn't been a boring female fight in the UFC yet. Because I feel like when the girls fight, they're not fighting for just themselves. They're fighting to put the girls on the map. So you see these girls, they're feeling the pressure to to because they, they want to feel like they belong. They want to put on a good fight. So these girls are scrapping, man. You haven't seen a bad female fight in the UFC yet. And that's yeah. why. I feel like they, they, they try to you know, live up to, you know, they belong in the UFC and they're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely, uh, talk, <laughs> that's absolutely how it is. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk a little bit, Liz, about, about your, your mindset. Talk a little bit, we were talking about like what a champion. Well, let me, let me fill you in, Brian. She comes from a military mindset. Yes. It's a big difference. Yes. You come from a dancing mindset. That's right. She comes from military <laughs> I'm mindset. I'm built for dance, Liz. But tell us a little bit about, I mean, what, what um, you know, because I, I, I like to kind of, like, a lot of young people that listen to this and stuff and, and talk a little bit about your philosophy and what you've come to, you know, what you've come, the conclusions you've come to, and how, how do you talk to yourself when you're training? I mean, I'm sure you, you experience bouts of self-doubt and fear like all of us. How do you overcome that stuff? I, my big philosophy is the only one that can't, that can't tell me I can do stuff in life is myself, and I'm the only one that can restrict me. As long as I let my life be soundless and allow myself to try for everything, then I'm capable of anything. And I think that that's helped me a lot in my training because I refuse to be the weak link in, in practice. I don't want to be the teammate that lets somebody down in their fight camp and certainly not my own fight camp. What, do you remember what seminal event kind of led you to that realization? What, what do you think? Why did that happen for you? Was it something you read? Was it a teacher you had? Do you remember how you came to that sort of belief system? Yeah, it was passed on to me by my mother. She was, she's always been big in telling me that the only person that can ever hinder me in my life is myself, and that I'm capable of doing anything that I put my mind and my heart to and give everything to. And I've lived by that, and I believe that to be true. Uh, why the military? Uh, because if I was going to do anything, I was going to do the best of the best. And uh, I was looking for a sense of direction in my life and a stepping stone. It would offer education and just a different platform and a different place in my life. And the military seemed like the best fit, and the Marine Corps was the best of them. But you know, the, you speak. It, this is a value system. You know, it's a, it's a real value system, and and it's a very important one. And and you're you're an excellent example. And I guess my question is, how did your mother impart that? How did you? What was it about your upbringing that led you essentially to understand why that was important? Oh, well, my mom definitely led me away from fighting and away from the military. Those are two places she never wanted to see me go. <laughs> um, but she did, 
she did want me to pursue my dreams and no matter what they were and with everything I had and with that meant that it led to fighting that she was going to support me in that. What, what, um, what nationality are you? Is it Carmouche is what? Carmouche is French, um, Irish, Lebanese, and Cajun. I thought, it, I think Carmouche, it sounded Lebanese. I lived in Lebanon for five years of my life, so that's why I asked. So there it is. Oh. Do you speak any Arabic? Not anymore. I did for the military, my third tour, and then having no one to practice with, it's completely gone. <laughs> yeah, it's, not a, it's actually definitely not an easy language. I, I lived in uh, the Middle East for eight years of my life, and I spoke a little bit, and, and, and yeah, it, it goes quick. It goes very quick. Oh, yeah. Um, well, listen, man, we're, we're, we really appreciate you calling in, man. We're looking forward to, to seeing your fight, and uh, I, I think uh, it's safe to say that uh, this podcast will be rooting for you. you know? Team Liz here. Team so we got Liz. Team Liz over here. So God bless, and, uh, and we're looking forward to, to this fight. Liz, slap her on the for me. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Don't be afraid yeah. to slip on a mid either. Uh, all right, have a, have a great fight, and thanks so much for calling in. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You got it. We'll see you soon. Hope to meet you in person. Peace. Not going to happen. See you, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Liz. Oh, man. She is a unique fighter, am I yeah. right? Yep. And we didn't, let her get a, we didn't let her get a word in. Did she words. not? I couldn't even hear it. No, I was so bored over here. <laughs> Playing with baseballs and stuff. You couldn't hear anything. Nothing. Let, what was she talking about? Well, she, she's, I asked her her beliefs as a, a, a fighter oh, like she, that. She's probably she's probably just focused on the fight. You know what? And I'm not letting her talk. And we're both talking. It's we're tough. The you know what's tough? Yeah, people hate us. You know what's tough? Is when the same thing happens. When you and I go to dinner, there will be a group of 10 people, and it is... The fighter and the kid, but at dinner. That's exactly right. It's just total That's silence. where we came up with the concept of the show, I feel like. <laughs> we go to dinner, and it was the fighter and the kid. We're, it, I, we, I think, I think we're, this might be our 20th episode, probably. Yeah. We probably have 60 in the bank, because if you go to dinner with us, it's <laughs> the same thing. There will be a special guest at dinner. you have gone to dinner tonight, you know. Am I coming over tonight? Yeah. Tell the people who's at dinner tonight. Besides me, got, who's the draw? We got some people. Yeah, we had some people. That's some A-list celebrities coming out. Some A-list celebrities. Kind of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We, we, you better have my cappuccino ready. She's an Oscar winner. We'll just Oscar winner? winner. We'll leave it there. I like to meet myself and I read. time Oscar winner. Really? Yeah. What movies? Um, Are you making this up? Yeah. Yeah. Because me, myself, and Irene didn't win an Oscar. In my heart, it did. Well, there are a lot not, of other movies. Cold Mountain. But, uh, yeah. Right. But we won't say. I don't know. She's a wonderful person. Great person. Um, moving on, it's not about acting, dude. Is this? I didn't know this podcast was about acting. Oh, guess what? It's about whatever I want. Is that it's right? whatever I want to talk about. I think we're all, we're out of time. No, we're not. Oh, we're we are not. nowhere we near time. Ten minutes. Oh, we got Why are you trying minutes. to kill the vibe, dog? Oh, we got ten minutes. Why are you trying to kill this vibe? That's great. Where you gotta go? No, you gotta go know. make me my damn dinner. Yeah, you know what's? You funny? gotta make me my dinner. You know what's funny about you? Is that when you came to the fighter kid, you got you got rub marks all over your face. <laughs> Yeah, it's D marks first of all. Oh, is that what it is? Because I was out working Beverly Hills. Yeah, with facial with with he on Gracie. He on on? He on Gracie. Put it on me, okay? Did, right? Me and him got it after for about an hour. About an hour. Yeah. You guys just started rolling. You know what's interesting is there's the class and he goes, hey, can you show me your Darcy and Anaconda setups? You know, he's like, oh, Brendan's the first uh, heavyweight in the UFC history to win by Darcy choke. Show these people. I didn't know that. Are you? Yeah, I am. Oh, calm yeah. down. Don't make that face at me. Well, it's not a big deal. Yeah. To me, it's not a big deal. No big deal. I expected well, it. Well, I expected it. Anyways, so he runs all, oh, yeah, Brennan's the first guy to win by, in the UFC, to win by darts choke in the heavyweight division. Yeah. He's like, show everyone your darts. So we go. I haven't been darts choked in probably about eight years. It's my move. I'm, I, I'm, it's going to sound cocky. I'm the master of darts chokes in the comment. He runs, goes, oh, let's roll. Me and him roll for about 45 minutes straight. He darsed the crap out of me. No. Yeah. Really? He did. God. He did. So annoying. Yeah, you, it's cool. For me, it's cool, man. It, it, it's it's so humbling. What's Because you think you're that you think you're the master of this move, and he's been doing it since in his diapers, and they just darsed me left to right. I would watch Henso uh, roll, and Henso would always go for chokes. Like Henso could do everything, but <laughs> it's it's weird. Some people are good, you know. Some people are armbar guys. Some people are tr- uh, arm triangle people. Some people are guillotine guys. And then you know, every, I'm good at I'm good at kind of all of them, but my specialty is darts jokes. I for for whatever reason, <clears throat> I just see it everywhere. Well, I see every opportunity for it. And some guys can do that with leg locks. Some guys can do that with Camaros. 
guillotines. Yeah, but you know the problem with good kimuras and leg locks and things like that is they're really hard. They're hard. they seem to be the hard to get in the UFC. Like, I was watching. I I rewatched um, uh, John Jones uh, fight Vitor Belfort, and Vitor had John Jones in a popped his elbow. It did he? Yeah, popped his elbow. He had him in that he almost crazy had him. good arm lock. Good and, and how did he get? I mean, pick, he did everything. It looked like John Jones doing what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, he got, so a meat, he got a meat headed out of it. And God. then Vitor lost kind of his control. How did he lose control of that? What, what, because what did he, do wrong? he didn't control his posture. He didn't control his posture with his legs. Your legs have to be like a crane. Okay. Like I'm almost making bunny ears and I'm yeah. snapping down. Yeah. And that's the motion of his legs controlling his posture. So he can't pull up, pull Why up. wouldn't Vitor know that after all these years? I'm sorry. To it's be- slippery. It's slippery. It's slippery. Maybe his legs got tired. Yeah. He, dude. And, he, and John Jones is strong as hell. John Jones is a little stronger and he's just a monster. Yeah. And his and his length is tough to deal with. He picked him up off the ground. A lot of guys, that's when crazy. you get picked up off the ground, there's a separation. So he kind of lost traction there. Who knows? He had his whole he, body up in the He air. finishes 99% of the UFC fighters in that arm bar. If he gets anyone else that? in that, yes. I just think John Jones' will to be champion got him out of that. God, it's amazing. He didn't do the right technique. Yeah, John Jones is He didn't no do the tra- right technique. No. He didn't do anything. But he got out of it. That's and, why he's champion. he damaged his, his elbow there? Or? Hurt his elbow there. So he had a pop. I bet. I mean, you know, that's Vitor Belfort on your own. And then he arm. submitted Vitor. Crazy. Crazy, man. So dope. He, he is... He is, he's got such a heart. John Champions Jones heart. Got a, but you know what we talked about? To get there, to get there and to hold, you've got to already, you know he's got an incredibly strong mind. And, and well, furthermore, sure. that's another it's example. John Jones that. just truly believes he belongs there. He belongs there. For yeah. sure. Believes it every day. You know what I want to talk about Believe it in? This mm-hmm. dinner you're going to make. What's for dinner tonight? Because well, you're having me over have with a group of friends. Yeah. It better be delicious. Oh, we're and keep wine. your juicy ass dog off of me. And but hey, way. real quick, listeners, his dog has one ear. Yeah. One ear. It's yeah. a pimple with one ear. He's got one ear. And it loves me. Well, my I gotta wash my dog. Here's the thing. Let's You definitely gotta way. wash it. Now now that we're talking, hey, would you mind when you come over to my house and I got a gathering, would you mind bringing something <laughs> for once? <laughs> and dip it in your pocket with alligator. And, and 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 at least grabbing some cash and buying a bottle of wine, or is your bubbling personality is that is that enough? The I gifts I bring to your house. What's that? I'm the entertainment. Is that what I'm you're the entertainment. entertainment? Is that I come to your house? Everyone's I'm like, thank God he's here. Many actors in my house, and you're like, you're the entertainment. I'm the entertainment. I mean, you just saunter in. Hey, everybody, guess who's here? That's right. Yeah. These juicy quads will be making an appearance. That's it. And this I got bubble a ass. Piece, I got a tail piece. And this tail piece. Quads. And that's, that's some my tight gift. ass jeans. That's going to be the gift. My tight jeans tonight that's, will be that's, the gift. Hey, everybody, this is my gift. Don't how, know, however, however, here's my gift. I'm gaze at my thighs. However, last time I was over, you know how to throw some dinner parties. Last time I was over, there was a jump castle for people's kids. I'm not making this up. And David Blaine, the magician, jumps out of the, the jump castle. Yeah. And starts performing magic. Yeah, it's because that's how I that's how I roll. You come to my house, you never know. You know what I want to do? Yeah, and, uh, this is you know this, whatever you call me whatever you want. I want to give David Blaine a makeover because his style yeah. was some of the worst I've ever seen. He had on a old black. old school black shirt, uh-huh. just like crumbs on it. He had on these stone washed black jeans yep. and these all black New Balances that were laced so tight yeah. and I felt like he was getting ready for a marathon. He just I just looked him up and down and thought, damn, bro, I'd love it. He can keep it all black. He just doesn't I'm down, I'm, I'm de- No, he doesn't. He has no style whatsoever. I'm down. He can wear the all black. I just want to give him a little little flavor on it. You know why he doesn't do that? Because he doesn't have to. No, no, no. You know why he doesn't do it? Because anyone that signs up for magic is going to be a little weird to begin with, okay? Okay, you don't grow up with a sense of style playing with cards. Did you day. see that video of him swimming with great white sharks? I haven't seen it. Is it out? I thought he was saving that for a special. Right, goes, Way to go! He goes, just drop blew me, up this whole special in the middle of the ocean. I'm gonna swim with great whites. By the way, he looks like my brother. Looks identical to my brother. Couldn't look more like your my brother's, brother's a little more beefier yeah. and way more sense of style. Your brother's a thicker version of David Blaine. Yeah, more in shape, David Blaine. My brother. Your brother's great because every time he sees me, he basically smiles the whole time. Yeah, he loves you. He loves you, man. Uh, he's a good man. So David Blaine, in the ocean, great whites. Dude, but but like massive great whites, and he can't see them. See, that's see not magic. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. Oh, God, forget it. He can't see them. 
Why he's blank on it? No, or you're, you're underwater. You're deep underwater. I can see underwater. He just could see shadows. Hold on. Am I an X-Man? Twenty-one foot shadows. I can see underwater. By him, they chum the water. Twenty. That's stupid. Shadows. No, he didn't. No, oh he yes, didn't. he did. No, he didn't. He yes, was he, he was did. in the kiddie pool, and someone else was down with the camera, sure and then they, they 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 photoshopped oh, him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wait till you see it. Really? Yeah. When's this coming out? Yeah. Slowed his heart rate down so they wouldn't get excited and he was in bull crap. Well, he held, he's got the world record for holding his breath. You know that, right? Do I, a little research. I do know that. Slow his heart rate down when these great whites are swimming around. Yeah. You that that ain't you magic. You don't want a fast heart rate. He has a black belt. They crazy. sense it. <laughs> what? You don't want you don't want to you don't want a fast heart rate. They sense it. They can they can feel it. The electric pulse. Hold on, hold on. Let me wrap my brain around this. This fool, David Blaine, said, "You know what? Forget these cards. Forget Vegas. Mm -hmm. Drop me in the middle of the ocean." Yeah. Chum the water with blood, so I look like a fish and smell like a fish. Yeah. So I look like a fish. Yeah. I'm gonna wear my tight ass black New Balance sneakers down there, yeah. and then have great white swim all around me, and nothing happened to him. Nothing. He just sank to the bottom. No, he's just he floated. He's just floating. They waited him. They waited him down just so. so. And not, not, they didn't bump into him or nothing. They swam around and they're very curious. Yeah, I have a heart attack. And here's the problem: if you stay down there long enough, eventually the one gonna get. Oh, eventually one because it, this they're feeling out process, yeah. am I right? Yeah. How about we always talk about sharks on this podcast? But here's the thing about gray whites. They, they, they evolutionarily they are pro They're the perfect bite. killing machine. They're They've never, never adapted. adapted. They are they're programmed to bite what they eat, which is fish and seals. When they see you, it's just different. It's not they don't know what you want. Mm, not a greased up David Blaine in all black with some well, tight new balances on. He looks like a little seal. That's it. That's so it. they did eat him and there's blood all in the water? Yeah. I find this hard to believe. There's no way I, I find this it. hard to believe. Oh, well, there are people that do it, and he saw it, and he said, I'm going to do that, and he did it. you got to know David. David, that's very common for David. David, David does whatever is a challenge that he's afraid of, he's, he's going to do. Yeah. And he might smack you around, too. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have to loosen up the black stone wash. No, he needs him for pivoting when he turns his body. That makes sense. Yeah. I feel like he wears all black because he hides stuff in his pockets. I told you, you don't want that to happen because you'd be embarrassed. If I see your boy, the world champion, U.S. You're world champion. You're double-legging him. You're double-legging him. No, I'm going to single-legging him. He's, he looks athletic. Single-legged, he's not, he's not going to have the right technique. I'll take him right down. Scoop choke right him right out. Here. And then I'm, I'm going to point at you and Hayden Panetari's going to be there again just because she's like the beer around boxers. She's going to be around. Yeah, this she's, is how it's going in my head. Hayden somehow's always the Yeah, she's always with boxers, world champion boxers. Yeah. I'm going to point at you and you're going to go, ah! I'm going to look at Hayden. She's going to grab my stuff and then we walk off. She's going to jump on my back. And like a koala. Gonna, I'm going to go. You're going to run off. Hey, come with me. Are you guys, what do you guys make out? Hey, come over here. Let me take you over here and show you what I want. <laughs> Why are you saying that creepy Chris Hansen <laughs> voice? Why is it creepy Chris what's Hansen? The, what's this? Oh, sorry. That thing just popped out right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you sound like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> is that your Clint Eastwood sorry, impression? Sorry, well, my friend is fighting. They always just say my beat. Right? <laughs> oh, oops. Oh, sorry. It makes noise. Careful. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Hey, sorry, that's my piss off. I think, I think now, now your dick is talking to Hayden Panettiere. I think it's time to walk out of the fighter in the kitchen. Is that right? Too much? Sing us out. We. And I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm your backup singer. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, you just hey, been born. Born. I was listening to a bunch of nonsense. I want to apologize to this Mooch for not letting her get a word in edgewise. Not really asking her her questions that she could answer. I have a really good voice, too. Super good voice. Yeah. Brennan, just remember you want nothing to do with the Klitschko's. They'll smack you around with an open hand. And you'll pull your pants. You'll pull your pants. That's pretty good. Pretty good. This has been The Kid and Big Brown. And uh, let's see if we're right in UFC 167. In the meantime, watch UFC on Wednesday night and uh, hold us to task. Tweet us. Um, tweet us, email us, whatever you got to do, and let us know how we're doing. And remember, if you pick against Tim Kennedy or Liz, you are a terrorist. Peace!